What's up guys, we're on part two of the RM250 build and we're putting the motor back together right now. I've already got the crankcases cleaned up. We've already dropped a bearing in this side here and we're getting ready to put the bearing in this side. So what we're doing, we're heating up this case. When you heat up metal, it expands. And then the old bearing is in the freezer right now. And that old bearing will, like metal will shrink. So we just did on that one and the bearing will drop right in there. So I'll get a video of it when we get ready to do that. just about got everything down on here now so i got the kickstarter shaft so in case i don't know how this operates this is where it sticks out where your kickstarter mounts to that when you kick this and this rotates it spins this gear here this gear here rotates the clutch basket the clutch basket rotates the crank when the crank rotates it goes up and the piston goes up that's where your combustion everything else comes from this is sitting on your primary transmission gear or shaft rather and then the other the gear down here it's on your counter shaft, which on the other side is where your counter shaft sprocket goes, which is right down here. And this is the shifter shaft. So <clears throat> I've got all this tightened down. I have no idea what the torque specs are on this. I've looked up all over the place on the internet, can't find anything. And all I've come up with is people have been just getting their impact and they just, they drive this down and they drive this down and they hit it a few times. That's the best I come up with that. So hopefully this will hold itself and hopefully that will hold itself. But I've looked everywhere and can't find anything. So these this is a henson clutch basket this thing has these are henson clutch plates in it so these are also henson clutch springs so i have brand new clutch springs try them out if they seem like i don't have a good pool or something i'll swap them out with the new springs and see what happens there but henson i know are good stuff so i'm gonna leave these in here because they're supposed to be pretty good well i know i haven't really been filming anything through the build of the motor but i've been trying to just get through it to get a lot of stuff i'm get, trying to get done <clears throat> kind of tight on time but we got it together I'm gonna throw the head on now got my moose piston in there as you can see and it's nice everything is good got it got old up the walls a little bit with some k2 the motor in the bike i went ahead and greased the linkage or not the linkage i greased the swing arm pivot bearings there it's looking like today should be the last day of the build for the bike so we got our parts from Motosports where I ended up ordering um, the throttle cable, reed valve, gasket, and um, some new snap ring for the front sprocket. Here's the new front sprocket. Um, that's just extra stuff I ordered just because I needed it for spares. And then my suspension came in from Evo. So that's sick. I'm pumped. And I'm definitely pumped that the shock spring is black. I put on a new hour meter yesterday. So you can see I wired that on. Whenever I put these on, wrap around the spark plug boot here, and then I'll wrap some electrical tape. And then I kind of like heat up with a lighter and just kind of like shrink wrap that on there. So that way it just holds it on real good, make sure it doesn't come off. And then ran the wire up through and back. There's the hour meter there. I got the motor all mounted up all over. Everything's good. I've got coolant in it. I've got engine ice and I've got VP 10W40 in the motor for oil. Got a new rear sprocket on there. Um, I went through and I re-greased all the linkages and everything. Um, this is where the shock mounts up to right there. I got the shifter on. I'm about to put the, the sprocket. I, I'm going to get new, um, all these fuel lines. I'm going to get new hoses and everything. I just haven't had time to do that. And no one nearby has it. I'll end up, I'll zip tie this to the frame here so it stays out of the way. Let me know y'all if y'all know anything about carburetors. So on these bikes, there's this plug here that I was recommended to just tape up and not run. And this is what it goes to on the carburetor. I'm not 100%. I've heard two different things of what this is. I really don't know much about it. But it was taped up before when I first got the thing and it ran good then. And I was told just to leave it like this because sometimes there's malfunctions to that stuff. So they said just tape it up and it'll be good. So that's what we're going to do because I really don't know anything about that. So I'm just hoping the advice I'm getting about leaving it alone is good. But if y'all know anything, please leave a comment down below. If there's somebody that y'all might know that would have better information on that, um, leave their information below or have them contact me. Placing the throttle cable, you can see it's rusted up and cracked right there. This is where it goes into the throttle tube. So 
I figured, hey, that's not good. I'm gonna replace that. So then you come down here and you can see this is starting to tear down here on the bottom end as well. Well, I'm pulling this thing out of the carburetor and it's got this mechanism here. And this is what's connected to this deal that I was talking about earlier, which goes up to this plug here. So again, I have no idea what that does. Place this cable, it's like any other carburetor or throttle assembly, I'd assume. You just pull this thing out <clears throat> and then the other end of the cable is down in there and you're gonna lift the spring and it's gonna allow that clip to come out. The cable will come out right with it. The new cable routed through here and I'm running through, it's got a zip tie holding it and then I'll be attaching to the carburetor. But before I do that, what I wanna do is I wanna spray some of this cable lube down through there. And they sell that fancy tool you can screw onto the thing, but clutch cable is a little bit harder to lube than throttle cable. Throttle cable has a little bit bigger hole here. You just wanna kinda like just work that and it'll kind of just work its way through the cable. And then after doing it for a second, you might see it drip out the other side or something. And you got it all the way through. Now you have a lubricated cable. Now you don't have this dry cable working through that line, which will wear it out faster. Now the new cables don't come with this rubber piece here. Mine's torn, which is unfortunate, but I don't have another one. The new cable does not come with that. So you're gonna wanna swap that out, put that on the new cable. So that way when you slide this over, I'm gonna try this with one hand here. I don't have a chest strap like all the other fancy YouTubers. Once you slide that over, this will kind of just pop down and that holds it all in place and it kind of seals it up as well. All right, here's our reed valve assembly here. So it's got the V-Force 3 reeds. These things are like brand new. So whoever had this thing before me, like these things look good. Here you see like brand new condition. I just gave these things a, a cleaning. They look great. In case you guys have one of these things and you need a gasket, so an engine rebuild gasket also the top end rebuild gasket neither one of them come with this v the reed valve gasket so if you need this gasket you know i order mine through motorsport i'm sure you can get, get one just about anywhere i'd imagine but i got through motorsport i did not get the oem i got the boysen one this boysen uh gasket was only six dollars the oem one was like 27 dollars. so i know this is a v-force reed and this is a boysen gasket, but it's just a gasket. It makes no difference. V-Force, I don't think has one. And all motorsport is six bucks. So I got it if it's perfect. There was, I didn't have to trim it, nothing. It just fit right on there. I've got these pro tapers. The part number is off of a Husqvarna 125. And then I got these Renthal fat bars. Um, I don't know if these are Honda or Cowie bars. I have no idea where these things came from, but these pro tapers have a lower, um, lower bend and more of a sweep to the bend here. And the rentals are a higher bend with less of a sweep, but I was measuring, I measured them and then these are actually three quarters of an inch um, narrower of a bar this way. So I'm gonna run these because on my Kawasaki, the Cowies have pretty narrow handlebars and I really don't want to be trying to adapt to wide and narrow bars all the time and with these being more narrow and i think these might actually be cali bars i really don't even know where these things came from so these older bikes use snap rings snap rings make me super nervous so the precaution i'm gonna take for that i'm gonna get it on there and i'm just gonna put a dab of rtv on here just to give a little bit extra kind of stiction on there so that way i don't have to worry about this thing ever popping off because i have heard of these things popping off of bikes in the past and that makes you super nervous so I'm going to be putting a dab of RTV just to keep it thing glued. I'm sure some of you mechanics out there are gonna hate me for this. I don't know, maybe, but <clears throat> that's gonna prevent that from popping off, I would say. I'm good with that. It's gonna be a pain taking that thing off in the future, most likely, but I would much rather prefer it be hard to change out than have it pop off while I'm trying to ride. We are almost done. I got the chain on, I got the subframe on, it's mounted to the carb, everything's good there. These hoses are super dry rotted and super stiff. I had to cut this one and lube it up just to get it to sit on there and it might fall off. So I definitely need to get new hoses, but <clears throat> for now, tomorrow, hopefully it'll be okay and I can just get those replaced later on. But I got me a moose filter. DT1 is who makes moose filters. So these are good filters. I got moose um, air filter oil on there. See, I got a collection of them here. So these, it's no different than twin air, same stuff there. All you gotta do now is slap the tank on there, get the pro circuit fatty pipe on it. This thing's sick. I repacked the silencer with some moose packing, which the moose packing is actually like high quality packing. It's good stuff. So this thing is so snappy. It is sick. So I'm super stoked. This thing, just listen.
Sunday. Dude, 